GM, GM, just a quick one before we get going. So as you know, the Blockmates podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Certainly shouldn't be considered as financial advice. We have absolutely no idea what we're talking about half the time. So any investment decision you do make should be based on your own research and your own understanding of the risks involved. One more thing as well, there's around 50% of people who listen regularly who aren't subscribed yet. So if you please could just do us a favor and hit the subscribe or the follow button or the like button. Helps content grow, helps us grow, helps it reach more people like yourselves um, and it means the world to us as well. So that's the last I'll uh, ask of you. So yeah, let's get to the episode. GM and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're breaking down Tapioca Dow. Now this one is coming with some very novel solutions and some amazing tokenomics designs. So this is gonna be a cross-chain money market powered by layer zero. So think of this as borderless liquidity for DeFi. And so what we're gonna see here is that bridges will no longer be required. Bridges are the biggest attack vector we've seen in crypto. Some outrageous numbers have been lost through them, but using layer zero and omnichain fungible tokens, we're gonna to have borderless liquidity and they're bringing with this a censorship resistant stablecoin in USD zero as well. So two big narratives, two key product market fits for crypto, a decentralized stablecoin and a money market. So make sure you grab a coffee, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and we'll jump on in. So the story of Tapioca Dow starts with the death of liquidity mining article written by the founder Matt. So this one is gonna really flip the script on what has been done previously in DeFi with liquidity mining seeing pretty much the death of the majority of protocols and the fact a lot of protocols that are out there right now rely on their emissions to actually maintain their TVL. They're pretty much dead on their legs. So one of the main issues in DeFi is an economic one in that protocols give out token emissions to mercenary capital to rent liquidity from them. This is what is known as liquidity mining, essentially Ponzi yield given out for just parking your capital somewhere. So maybe you're staking your token or maybe you're providing an LP position for this various protocol. And what they're gonna do is just emit you their governance token. You see that with the likes of Compound and others. So this does help to boost the TVL metrics. However, a key component of total value locked is the word locked and none of the protocols have really addressed the issue with the fact that the liquidity is not locked you have mercenary capital or liquidity locusts who once the emissions dry up they will just leave and so your tvl disappears so tapioca dow have really thought about the aspect here of time it's no use if you've got a lot of money for just one millisecond, you can't do anything with it, extract value from it, or even spend it. So these liquidity locusts that we can see have played DeFi are slowly leaving behind a trail of dead DeFi protocols. So this is the script Tapioca DAO is gonna flip. So as you can see from the on-screen charts, a lot of the protocols in DeFi don't actually make any money. Instead, their revenues come from the supply side, i.e. token emissions. This is very unsustainable and shows you they don't actually have a proper business model. So no revenues plus liquidity mining equals an inevitable outcome. Now, Tapioca's actual virtuous cycle here is to A, obtain as much protocol-owned liquidity as possible, then put that protocol-owned liquidity to use to generate yield, then further acquire even more protocol-owned liquidity and rinse and repeat those steps. So what we will look at in this video is the DSO DAO share options. You may have heard of these options tokens they're bringing to market called OTAP, and we'll break down exactly how they capture protocol-owned liquidity through that mechanism, which will mean that Tapioca can self-sustain. So the key ingredient behind actually generating yield on top of the TVL is that time factor we mentioned a little bit earlier. If liquidity can remain sticky, you have the time and the opportunity to extract yield from it. So the secret source behind Tapioca is called TWAML, Time Weighted Average Magnitude Lock. We'll explain that in a bit more detail in a bit. But essentially the mantra here is you have to give value in order to get value. So just as in life, everything starts with a big bang. So on screen here, we have the big bang market. So this is the mint functionality of the DAP on Tapioca. So essentially what this allows is for individuals to supply collateral assets to mint USD zero against. 
So in terms of this being a censorship resistant stablecoin, USD0 is only backed by certain collaterals. And we're talking liquid gas tokens, the likes of ETH, maybe AVAX, and LSDs, yield bearing assets, STETH, RETH, those kind of things. This means no centralized coins backing this, i.e. USDC, nor any shit coins, really long tail assets that would pose a real risk to the peg of USD0. So within this, you would supply some collateral out of those specified collateral types. You would select your LTV ratio, maintaining a good health factor there. You can actually get up to 90% LTV on certain assets. And then you would take that loan in USD0 to be deployed within the tapioca ecosystem. One of the actual underpinning technologies here is Boring Crypto's Cashy Lending. So as part of Big Bang, utilizing this tech stack, it has support for yield bearing coins like those liquid staking derivatives, STETH, RETH and others. So this means that over time, the borrow position would continually reduce down to a point where you can get self-repaying loans via these accepted collateral types. So not only do you maintain exposure to your yield bearing assets, you also have a stable coin you can go and use for various different strategies, some of which will be embedded within Tapioca. So one click strategies can be deployed. You can also lever up using this money market as well. And so I think this will make for a very sought after stable coin and sought after marketplace, especially considering the lack of things you can do on the incumbent money markets. So the stablecoin trilemma is censorship resistance, which we just talked about, scalability and stability to the peg. Now we know there is a huge market appetite for a decentralized stablecoin. Unfortunately, the ones you see on the screen here do not fit the bill. We saw last cycle that UST had phenomenal growth as it was a decentralized stablecoin, but it did collapse. So the fact is we know that there is a big demand for USD zero with a collateralized debt position stable using uncensorable collaterals. And so I think, as you can see from the market caps on screen here, hundreds of millions into billions of dollars is the potential addressable market here for tapioca with USD zero. Now there's a few safety features and things in play around USD zero. As an example, the mint functionality can actually be switched off for certain collaterals if they start to pose a risk for the system. They use a collateral debt ratio to dynamically adjust the interest charged on stablecoin minting in order for peg protection purposes. When we think about the liquidity behind this, as I mentioned earlier, the aim of Tapioca is to get as much protocol on liquidity as possible. And so the liquidity pairs for USD zero will be POL pairs. So that means it's their own liquidity within the LP positions for the token. And thus, as the actual protocol grows, as they get more of these options tokens redemptions, USD zero can grow alongside with it. And there shouldn't be a case for a bank run as the POL will scale alongside USD zero. So as a user of the protocol here, you've parked some collateral, taken out a USD zero alone. And then with that USD zero, you can also take it to the wider markets called Singularity, within which borrowers will want to borrow USD zero for some of the available strategies and leverage on offer within Tapioca. Then over to the borrow tab, which is known as the Singularity markets here. This is where borrowers can deposit their collateral to actually take out a loan in USD zero. These are collateral types, as you can see here, GLP as an example, these are collateral types that aren't allowed within the Big Bang Mint function. So these collaterals could be quite centralized, they could be more shit coins, things that could potentially affect the kind of decentralized nature of USD zero or potentially affect the peg. Hence, they're not used to mint USD zero against. People in here with these collaterals have to borrow from the lenders. So an easy flow here, you deposit your collateral types into the Singularity market, watch your LTV and mint USD zero against that position. You can see within here, there would be a liquidation price. There's an interest rate payable to the actual lenders. And then as a result, users of this USD zero could lever up within here in a one-click solution, 
or they can get access to the yield strategies from the yield box we mentioned a little bit earlier. And what you can see from this on screen here is the ability to deposit collateral on one chain, say Arbitrum, to take advantage of an opportunity and receive your stablecoin loan on a different chain, Avalanche. You've probably been in this position where you've wanted to do something very similar. Maybe you've got an LP position on one of these chains and you wanted some short-term liquidity to take advantage of a trading opportunity on another. So I do think this will be a product you can see a lot of people will really want to use. And then in terms of the user flow for people who have minted USD0 and are lending it to the borrowers here in Singularity, they can choose to actually lock their collateral. So if you've got USD0 and you choose to lock it for a predetermined amount of time to these markets, you're obviously providing liquidity to these markets for borrowers to use. You're not only gonna get interest on the borrower's loan, but you're also gonna get the incentive of OTAP, the options token. This is one of the main tokenomics designs, this OTAP, and we'll discuss this in more detail in just a bit but just a heads up as to where OTAP fits into things here. Then in terms of competition, we of course have Singularity, the markets we're just looking at, versus the likes of Aave or Comp. They have these large unified pools, which actually creates more of a risk, kind of like the weakest link in the chain. If you have a very high risk collateral, it can actually create a systemic risk for the whole system. This has happened with money markets in the past. Whereas with Singularity, you have isolated one collateral, one market kind of strategies. And so this isolates the risks for each and every single market. This is actually what allows for the bottom part here, one click leverage to be usable, up to 10x leverage, I believe it is, and for yield strategies to also become available via yield box. So under the hood, some of these things are allowing for this money market to be like the competition, but on steroids. We also have elastic interest rates from tapioca, and these help to target a utilization ratio of around 70 to 80%. And this would actually mean better capital efficiency for tapioca compared to these competitors. And of course, if you're having your assets utilized more and more, there's going to be more fees generated and a better virtuous cycle throughout this ecosystem. So on screen, you can see an example from the docs here of what is actually possible utilizing yield box. So remove yourself from the shackles of the incumbents out there. This is something that would be possible here. So a borrower would come and deposit a collateral into Singularity. So this could be, for example, Stargate ETH. This deposit creates a CDP position for that USD zero. The collateral then is used to be applied into a yield strategy. Stargate ETH has, of course, a yield bearing component to it, and it actually earns STG. So the protocol here would be earning that STG yield and then selling it to obtain more Stargate ETH to actually self repay the debt position here. And potentially if the user requires or wants, they can actually loop this and lever this up even further to juice those rewards. So strategies such as this will create a supply side incentive for USD zero creation. The tokenomics of tapioca are what really sets it apart from the rest. So in this piece, let's just go through the actual tokenomics one by one, how they all work and interoperate between each other to stimulate growth and sustainability for this ecosystem. So just as a basic overview, the TAP token itself will have a maximum supply of 100 million. As you can see via this emission curve here, this is the plan distribution. But you can see the bottom part here is the DSO incentives, the options tokens that must be redeemed. And this is 52.5% of total supply. Now this is on the basis that 100% of these options are exercised on time, but it's highly likely that this pans out over a much longer duration. So the TAP token itself will have two main utilities. Number one being governance. This is a decentralized system they call it a decentral bank. So you need to vote on changes. There could be the option to be voting on interest rate changes or minting fees, that kind of stuff in the future, or maybe new collateral types to be added. It's also the value capture mechanism for the ecosystem as 100% of revenues are distributed to the state version of Tapioca. 
that is TW tap. We'll go into that in just a second. There are no actual emissions of tap. As you can see from that DSO incentives there, it's all based upon people exercising those options. So lenders with locked positions, supplying stables into Singularity, that is how we get an injection of new supply, new TAP tokens onto the market if they exercise their rights to those options. Then the TAP token itself is an OFT, Omnichain Fungible Token. This means it will have seamless movement across chain using a layer zero. There's going to be a lot of T tokens you'll see once this thing goes live as well. They're going to be tapioca tokens, which will also be Omnichain Fungible Tokens. So a real core piece here is TWAML, Time Weighted Average Magnitude Lock. So this is created by Rectora and Matt from the team. And this really inserts the time elements, you know, total value locked. Is it really locked? And how do they actually overcome this hurdle of time? So as per the mantra, you have to give value to get value. You are not forced to actually lock any tokens within this ecosystem. There's no forced participation. You can use the money market without locking up any collateral. So the ball is in your court. You have the option to lock USD zero if you wish. And if you do, you get rewarded based on your time lock. You bring more real TVL. It's real because it's with the actual DAO for a sustained period of time and they can earn yield on top of it. It becomes part of the circular economy. And so for bringing that to the table, your options token, your OTAP, the discount on that will increase. So the greater the time lock you decide to take, the greater the discount you will get on OTAP. So as they state in their documents, AML, average magnitude lock, is all about the measuring stick, appraising what is currently in the system versus what you're bringing to the table. It's also used not only for OTAP, but also TWTAP as well, the state version of TAP. So this, in essence, is the market valuing time. So if people are willing to lock for longer and longer durations, that is likely to occur in times of high growth. It will mean more protocol-owned liquidity, more options being redeemed. And then in times of maybe decline and a bit of a pullback in the market, like a bear market, as AML would start to decay, people are less willing to lock for longer durations. The shorter duration locks will be rewarded more and stimulating growth back into the economy. So let's take a look at how the DSO, these DAO share options and OTAP work together for this economic growth. So say we start with a balance of USD zero. So maybe we've been to Big Bang, we've minted some USD zero. We come to the Singularity lending market here. And what it's going to do is propose, do we want to actually lock this in? Now, we can increase the yields that we're going to receive by max locking up to 4x the current average locks. So that is the measuring stick of AML. Do you want to do a longer duration than that? Maybe a shorter one? What kind of discount are you after? on OTAP here. So the longer you give in terms of that time, the greater the discount on OTAP you'll receive from 5% up to 50%. Again, the greater the value we give, the greater the value we're gonna get back. So from these steps, we've just supplied collateral into the markets here. We've given it to the actual ecosystem for a sustained period of time. And now we are given a call option of OTAP. So this will happen on a weekly basis. And this is an American style call option, gives you the right, but not the obligation to actually exercise it. And whatever discount level we've achieved, so say we've got a 50% discount here, we'll receive that to the actual market price each and every weekly epoch. So say in week one, the market price is 10 bucks per tap, we'll be able to exercise our option at $5. However, if in week two, the price of tap has decreased to nine bucks, our 50% discount will give us the option to buy at $4.50. So you can see that the discount level you get from your AML is actually the profit level that you can achieve. Then I guess for most people, they're either gonna take the arbitrage, so they've got a 50% discount to market, they'll sell the tokens on the market and realize the gain, or they could take that tap lock it into TW tap and use it for the revenue share components, which we'll cover in just a second. So the end user wins out. And then of course the protocol as the option is exercised, the individual is paying in either USD zero, 
ETH or USDC in this kind of OTC deal with the DAO. And my DAO is receiving those funds for protocol owned liquidity that it can then use itself to actually generate even more yields. Now, if we just look at the schedule here, you can see if DSO is 100% exercised each and every week, this would be the actual emissions of TAP. It is highly unlikely that this can occur as these options could expire. As they expire at the end of each week, they could expire out of the money. So out of the money would mean that your option strike price, it's actually below that, the market price right about now. So if you had, say, just a 5% discount, of course, you can imagine in crypto, the prices could swing 10, 20% in any given day, while well, you'd be out of the money. It's not profitable to actually exercise your option in this scenario. Hence, you wouldn't be able to exercise it. And what would happen with that, it would roll over into the next weekly epoch at which you have another opportunity to buy it again. So each and every time people are out of the money on their options, they just keep rolling over and rolling over and rolling over. So it makes a lot of sense that we're never gonna see 100% of these exercised on time. And it's likely to mean that the emissions here via DSO is gonna go out a lot further, maybe somewhere in between one or two of these lines here. So in terms of the emissions, I don't think we're going to see Zimbabwe-like inflation of the TAP token. So then we have TWTAP to round off the tokenomics here. So TWTAP is the locked version of TAP, so time-weighted TAP. So again, using the AML measuring stick to compare your lock versus others within the ecosystem. So say you've got some TAP here. You want to lock it because without locking it, you can't get involved with governance and you also can't take advantage of the revenue share. So you propose your lock duration and this means you have your time-weighted average magnitude lock. Again, this kind of market pricing for time. So you've got TW tap now as an output after you've done the lock and this gives you the rights to governance. So voting power for protocol level changes, that kind of thing. It also gives you control over the flow of OTAP in terms of its gauges. This could also mean there's a potential down the line for others to want to bribe TWTAP holders to actually potentially send OTAP in greater quantity to certain markets. That's something that could come in the future. And also by locking up for TWTAP, you get protocol revenues. 100% of the revenues generated by Tapioca DAO go to TWTAP holders. So the lot duration will be from a minimum one week upwards and you will get this output of TWTAP from 0% all the way up to 100% from shortest lock to longest lock. At the end of, I think it's Friday, 5 p.m. each week, the end of these epochs, you're gonna get the payout from Tapioca's revenues directly to you. And that will be paid in TETH. So Tapioca ETH, an omnichain fungible token form of Ethereum. So if you want to get paid weekly in ETH, this could be a good protocol for yourselves. And something very interesting around TWTAP and OTAP, both of these are actually omnichain NFTs. So it wouldn't surprise me if there will be markets available somewhere to actually trade these as well. So they could well be more liquid than people think. So we've added value in the form of locking our USD zero into the singularity markets to ensure others can come and use our liquidity. And then we've received value back in the form of TW tap with its main utilities around governance, those gauge votings, and of course, most importantly, the protocol revenue share. So in white here, these are the protocol fees that would go to TW tap lockers a big bang usd zero creation fees between zero and one percent on a variable basis the yield box performance fees so as we saw earlier there's going to be strategies within the singularity vaults and we're going to get a clip of those performance fees there the big bang interest fee 1.5 percent but this is variable fixed on an eth market basis any liquidations that occur protocol wise five percent are taken as the liquidation fee plus any bonuses there's a flash mint fee as well if people want to utilize flash mint for peg stabilization. That's just at one bip. But then we have in terms of the Arrakis V2 vault manager. So this is the LP positions for that protocol owned liquidity for USD zero, the tap token, etc. 50% of those fees come back to the TW tap lockers. 
So in all likelihood, as protocol-owned liquidity grows over time and this economy picks up, the revenues could be rather large. So let's sign off with the bull case here and a mention on community as well. So decentralized censorship resistant stable coins, possibly one of the biggest opportunities in crypto that has a check mark here from USD zero. We also see that in DeFi, the largest TVL protocols are actually money markets. Again, these guys are going after the biggest markets in crypto. We also see the likes of the incumbents, Aave, Compound, etc., have very bad token economics and they have not been innovating. So the idea here is potentially tapioca will eat their lunch. You also see that a lot of protocols will park their treasury funds into money markets. Why would they not want to use an omnichain money market with more strategies available? That is a question I ask you. Then additional to this, you can see, of course, these are gigabrains that have created this thing. And by actually getting exposure to the TAP token and locking it, you're going to actually get revenue share from all the other things they build out. And by the looks of things, they will not be stopping with what we've covered here today. They're going to have more things in the pipeline. And so this could be an ever increasing pie that you could get a slice of. Now, in terms of community, as you can see, TAP Talk episode 73. These guys have been public facing for like two years at this point. They do these tapioca talks each and every week consistently, and the community really appreciates this. So if you do want to hear more from them, check this out. Also check out the podcasts done on the main Blockmates channel here, but also on Still Early as well with the tapioca guys. And if you're looking for some late night reading over on the Blockmates website, we've also got a load of articles to really sink your teeth into. So I hope you enjoyed this explainer today. Make sure you do subscribe if you're new and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.